all this time, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know if they had caught him, if he lived next door to me. In 2010, a woman we'll call Elizabeth was out for a walk in the southwest part of Albuquerque when a man grabbed her, pulled her into his car and did the unthinkable. He eventually let her go. She went straight to the hospital for an exam where medical staff collected DNA from her attacker and other physical evidence. The whole reason I went down there and went through the process all over again was to prevent it from happening to somebody else. Her body so bruised and battered, court records show even the nurse was crying. Elizabeth says 12 years after her attack, she still cries. I cry all the time. I break down all the time. I don't sleep very much. She says what is even more devastating, Elizabeth found out the evidence gathered from her body and put in a rape kit test sat on a shelf for eight years. And Elizabeth wasn't alone. More than 5,000 other rape kits sat on shelves and labs throughout New Mexico untested for years, in some cases, decades. When 2016 rolled around, state leaders, including Tim Keller, pushed to get those rape kits tested. Before he was elected mayor, a state auditor, he uncovered that massive backlog. We cannot catch and stop these people unless we actually do the DNA testing. Prosecutors say once Elizabeth's rape kit was tested, eight years after her brutal attack, they say the DNA matched the DNA of a man named Victor Gonzalez. Nearly a decade ago, we told you about Gonzalez. In 2012, he was charged with kidnapping and raping a woman. Court records show that 2012 case was dismissed because of issues with video evidence. Turns out it was far from the first time Gonzalez was charged with raping women. We are also dealing with a very dangerous defendant uh, that we're trying to hold accountable. Court records show he was tied to five sexual assaults from 2010 to 2012. In 2014, he took a plea deal in at least one of those cases and was sentenced to two years behind bars. Now, 12 years after Elizabeth's attack, Gonzalez is set to go to trial in her case this summer. Elizabeth says she'll be in that courtroom. I feel like he got away with so much and I'm angry at him, but at the same time facing him is really hard for me, you know, but I, I know he needs to be put away. And while the criminal case makes its way through the courts, because her rape kit sat on a shelf for eight years untested, Elizabeth filed a civil lawsuit against the city and police department. What did happen is more women were raped because Nobody took the basic care with these cases that needed to be taken. And Elizabeth is not the only woman who's filed a civil lawsuit against the city because her rape kit sat on a shelf for years. Her attorney is also representing another woman who says her rape kit went untested for years as well. For Target 7, I'm Nancy Laughlin. Gonzalez's attorney sent a statement saying we can't rush to judgment no matter the accusations. The jury needs to hear all of the evidence. Now, in the civil cases against the city, the spokesperson for, says when Tim Keller became mayor, he reformed rape kit testing in Albuquerque. They point out they cleared that backlog years ago. Nearly 33 years after a high profile case started, Paul Apodaca is now indicted in the death of Caitlin Arquette. Police say Apodaca not only killed Arquette, but also murdered Athelia Oakley and 13 year old Stella Gonzalez. Investigators say Apodaca did not know his victims, but he confessed in all three deaths last summer. That is what a lot of their work was, is going back and saying, do we have unique evidence, insider evidence that Mr. Apodaca is providing that makes his story credible? Well, Apodaca is due in court Friday in this case, and he's already pleaded not guilty in the Gonzalez murder. We reached out to his attorney who says they look forward to taking the case to court.